friends welcome to curious vet channel i am dr mohsena the topic for today's video is recurrent airway obstruction or heaves in horses so firstly before going to the details of the disease i just want to show you one characteristic clinical sign of this disease that is flared nostrils in horses so you can see in this picture the flared nostrils this happens because of difficulty in breathing so recurrent airway obstruction or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or heaves these are the different synonyms of the same disease and uh, heaves is more common term and in this picture you can see a horse with heaves it is having a characteristic peculiar classic heave line in the bottom line of the ribs that we will discuss later so this disease is a common performance limiting allergic respiratory disease of horses the direct cause is debatable anyway the progressive onset is thought to be related to hypersensitivity to environmental factors it is seen most commonly in winter in stabled horses the disease is characterized by chronic cough nasal discharge and respiratory difficulty you can see the peculiar classic heave line here the bottom line of the ribs this is caused by hypertrophy of abdominal muscles due to the expiratory efforts so there will be episodes of airway obstruction when susceptible horses are exposed to common allergens so when the susceptible horses are exposed to the common allergens we can see episodes of airway obstruction and most horses exhibit clinical signs when they are stabled or bedded on straw or fed hay and elimination of these inciting factors results in remission or attenuation of clinical signs pathophysiology involves neutrophilic small airway inflammation mucus production and bronchoconstriction in response to allergen exposure coming to the etiology usually this disease affects older horses so the average onset of a disease is 9 year 9 years old approximately 12 percentage of mature horses have some degree of allergy induced lower airway inflammation there is no breed or gender predilection but there is a heritable factor in this disease and coming to the clinical findings these are the clinical findings they are the flared nostrils tachypnea cough and heave line so this pic these pictures show the first one show a normal horse on the left side and the right picture there is over breathing or flared nostril then there will be a uh, typical breathing pattern with prolonged labored expiratory phase of respiration so the expiratory phase of respiration is both prolonged and labored
Cuff may be productive and often occurs during feeding or exercise. The abdominal muscles respond by assisting with expiration and this causes hypertrophy of these abdominal muscles which in turn produces the classic heave line. So this is a picture of classic heave line can be seen along the bottom ed edge of the ribs due to hypertrophy of the abdominal muscles which assist in breathing and become large from excess work. In this picture it is represented with the yellow line. You can see the classic heave line here in the bottom edge of the ridges. Coming to the characteristic auscultatory findings. There will be prolonged expiratory phase of respiration, vesis, tracheal rattle and over expanded lung fields. And this picture shows an endoscopic image of carina of a horse with recurrent airway obstruction. Mucosal surfaces appear a little bit inflamed and exudate also present in the lumen of trachea. So, vesas are gen generated by airflow through narrowed airways and are most pronounced during expiration. Crackles may be present and are associated with excessive mucus production. Mild to moderately affected uh, horses may present with minimal clinical signs at rest, but cuffing and exercise intolerance are noted during performance. Horses with recurrent airway obstruction are not typically febrile unless secondary bacterial pneumonia has developed. So, these horses with uh, heaves or recurrent airway obstruction have no fever unless they are affected with secondary bacterial infections. Then horses from southeastern United States may demonstrate clinical signs on late summer pasture. It likely reflects sensitivity to molds or grass pollens. This is referred to as summer pasture associated obstructive pulmonary disease. The management is similar to that of heaves with addition to pasture, pasture avoidance. Then coming to the diagnosis, diagnosis is done on the basis of history and characteristic physical examination findings. Hematology and serum chemistry results are unremarkable. This is a picture of a horse with heaves. It is having elaborate breathing. You can see the open mouth breathing and uh, the peculiar posture and also the flared nostrils are visible here. Coming to radiographic findings. There will be peribronchial infiltration and over expanded pulmonary field, sometimes flattening the diaphragm. But these signs are not confirmatory. So, in this picture, it shows the right lateral radiograph. And uh, in, in this you can see uh, the characteristic bronchial infiltration that is it is seen throughout the lungs and here the diaphragm is concave. Thoracic radiographs are of little benefit in confirming the diagnosis of recurrent airway obstruction. Not necessary in horses with characteristic clinical signs unless there is no response to standard treatment after 14 days of therapy. This disease should be differentially diagnosed from interstitial pneumonia, pulmonary fibrosis and bacterial pneumonia.
Bronchoalveolar lavage is rarely required for diagnosis of fulminant recurrent airway obstruction. This test is not innocuous or it is harmless in horses that are dyspneic at rest and it is indicated in horses with mild to moderate disease with poor performance and coughing during exercise. Neutrophilic inflammation of 20 to 90 percentage of total cell count confirms the presence of lower airway inflammation and it also differentiates the horses with heaves from uh, the horses with eosinophilic pneumonitis, fungal pneumonia and lungworm infestation. Cytologic evaluation reveals a peculiar structure called Cushman spirals. It represents inspissated mucus or cellular cast from obstructed small airways. So Cushman spirals you can see in this picture. They are spiral shaped mucus plugs from the subepithelial mucus gland duct or bronchioles. So these spirals are called Cushman spirals. And this is a peculiar finding in lower airway obstruction disease. Treatment. Environmental management should be done to reduce allergen exposure because medication will alleviate clinical signs of disease but the respiratory disease will return after medication is discontinued if the horse remains in allergen challenged environment. Horses that remain stalled should be maintained in a clean, controlled environment. Complete commercial feeds eliminate the need for roughage. Hay cubes and hay silage are ac acceptable. Low allergen or alternative sources of roughage may be preferred by horses over the complete feeds. The most common culprits are organic dust present in hay which need not appear overtly musty to precipitate an episode in a sensitive horse. Horses should be maintained at pasture with fresh grass as the source of roughage supplemented with pelleted feed. Round bale hay is particularly allergenic and is a common cause of treatment failure for some horses. Then soaking hay with water before feeding may control clinical signs in mildly affected horses, unacceptable for highly sensitive horses. Horses maintained in a stall should not be housed in the same building as an indoor arena. He should not be stored overhead. Straw bedding should be avoided. Horses with summer pasture associated obstructive pulmonary disease that the disease we explained before they should be also maintained in a dust free stable environment and they should be kept away from pasture also. Coming to the medical management of heaves. It is a combination of bronchodilating agents and corticosteroidal preparation. Bronchodilating agents will provide relief of airway obstruction while the corticosteroid preparations reduce pulmonary inflammation. Bronchodilator therapy Beta agonist and parasympatholytic agents can be given. They provide immediate relief of airway obstruction until the clinical signs of diseases are controlled by corticosteroids.
Severely affected horses are controlled with aerosolized bronchodilators like albuterol, ipratropium, etc. and systemic corticosteroids, example dexamethasone, 0.1 mg per kg per day intravenously. But horses with mild to moderate airway inflammation can be given aerosolized corticosteroids and aerosolized or systemic bronchodilators like clenbuterol. It is inappropriate to treat recurrent airway obstruction with bronchodilators as the sole therapy. So always with bronchodilators we should give corticosteroids and no demonstrated therapeutic benefits are obtained from leukotriene receptor antagonist, antihistamines and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So that's all for today. If you like the video, like it. If you have any suggestions, please comment and uh, share the video with your friends. If you are watching this video and not subscribed yet, please subscribe and click the notification bell. I will be uploading at least one video every week. So see you soon with another video. Thank you.